if you would. Assemble some of the in assemble under this tent here. Get as close as we can and then we ask that during the military honors, if you're military, we ask that you salute. During the playing of taps, if you're not, you place your hand over your heart. The military will do their ceremony first.
God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Before we get started with Glenn Robinson's services, I would just like to ask you if God's been good to you. Won't you give God a hand clap of praise? Oh, come on, you can do better than that because he woke you up this morning and started you on your way. Amen, amen, amen. This is a homegoing service for my father on this day. Uh, we're going to start with the services here, the auto services. We're going to ask First Lady Sarah Priester to please come and bless us with angelical singing. Then we're going to have Reverend Dr. Chaucey C. Priester come and give us a scriptural reading in a prayer of strength. And I'll be back to greet you from there. I am convinced that my Godfather lived his life by the words of these song, this song. And I pray that you would find comfort in these words. You know my name. You know my name, and oh, how you walk with me. And oh, how you talk with me. And oh, how you tell. That I am your own, you know my name, and oh, how you walked with me, and oh. So now I pour out my heart to you. I'm hearing your presence. I am made new. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. And oh, how you walk with me. And oh, how. 
pour out my heart to you. I'm hearing your presence. I am made new. The scripture reading is found in Psalms chapter 24. It says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For they are found upon the seas and savage from the floods. Who shall descend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Lift up your hands, O ye gates. Be ye lift up ye everlasting doors. The King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your hands, O ye gates. Lift up ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Eternal everlasting God, our Heavenly Father, as we come before you at this hour of the day of mourning, you said in your word, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We pray now for the Holy Spirit, the Paracletos, who come and strengthen the heart of Sister Norma Lee Robinson. Who God, touch her from the crown of her head to the very sole of her feet. Touch the children, the grandchildren, this entire family. Lord, you send your word, you'll never leave us, nor will you forsake us. And we thank you, Lord, that you are very present help in the time of a storm. So we pray now in the name of Jesus Christ, that your glory, your presence, and your power will manifest now in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for your songs and your prayers. At this time, we're going to ask my sister, Erica Robinson, to please come forward. She's going to speak on behalf of all the siblings. Thank you. I'll try to get through this. Representing all of my siblings, Yvonne, Kim, Rob, and Tracy. On behalf of the entire Robinson family, we want to thank each of you for all of your acts of kindness. Because of the pandemic, receive oops, sorry, because of the pandemic, receiving traditional warm hugs and house visits was not allowed. But our family, friends, church members, and co-workers have made this the most made this most difficult time of our lives bearable through your thoughtfulness and gener generosity of phone calls, text messages, cards, monetary gifts, and food. Again, we thank you all so much. To our mom, dad's wife of almost 60 years, we are here for you, mommy. We know you are going to have sadness and feelings of loneliness. You don't get to spend 60 years with somebody and not have those emotions. You know that dad loved you, so let your good memories ease those feelings. Those feelings are natural, but that's when you lean most on God. We stand with you, Mom, and remember you have a strong family unit that is supporting you. On Thursday, I was having a moment, and as Tracy was comforting me, she said, Erica, none of us have any regrets. I stopped crying, and I looked at her, and I told her, thank you for saying that. On Saturday, when I speak, that is where I'm going to get, I'm going to draw my power from. We may, to my siblings, we may be shedding tears, but we have no regrets. We don't have to regret.
had a past conversation because we've always respected our dad. We don't have to regret wondering if he loved us because he showed us that he did every second of his life. We don't have to regret if he provided for us because he did that daily. We don't have to regret if we didn't do enough because each one of us did went above and beyond for our daddy. So do know if you see any tears from us, there are no regrets. Those teardrops are just full of fond memories of our dad. We all are blessed to have dad live to be 88 years old. That is a lot of years on this earth. I won't go over his 88 years, but I do want to share from his last week of life. Because of COVID and our parents being in their late 80s, we decided to do extreme shelter at home. Just because we didn't visit with them physically, we did videos and phone calls several times a day. Rob, Yvonne, and Kim would always do wellness checks, making sure that they were okay. We all brought them supplies, masks, gloves, lots of food and drinks. But last week, Tracy and I said, we have had enough of not seeing them. I came here on Monday and Tracy came on Friday. Daddy was so happy. On Saturday, all of us was at the house. He said, I'm so proud of all five of my children are here taking care of me and my wife. He said, I love all of you. Dad's not big on emotions, but we can see by the huge smile on his face and feel in our souls nothing but joy. Not happiness, but joy. Nothing but a merciful and loving God would allow us to come together for what we now know is our last family gathering. Even in his very last moments on this earth, Dad was thank thanking Mom and us for everything and showing us how much he loved us. We thank God that Dad's last, last moments was joyous, and we find peace and comfort that he loved, knowing that he loved his entire family. To our uncles, Uncle Sugar Boy and Uncle Petey Boy, Daddy loved you both. And he is entrusting mom and all of us to the two of you. In closing, I would like to share a letter from Tracy and I's pastor from Second Calvary Baptist Church in Charlotte, Reverend Dr. Ralph McCormick. Although this letter is addressed to Tracy Robinson Ellis and Erica Robinson, it is befitting for all of our siblings. Dear Tracy Robinson Ellis, Erica Robinson. We are so sorry to hear the loss of your father, Mr. Glenn Robinson Jr. The loss of a father is a painful time in our lives. Fathers are the heads of households and symbols of strength in our homes and in our lives. When they leave us, we question from where that strength will now come and from where that leadership will now come to. The strength and leadership of your father will be missed, but the love, strength, and leadership of your heavenly father will never leave. He is where all strength and power originate and where they end. Your father knew this, and this is where his strength came from, from God. I know that if your father were there, he would tell you to lean on God's power to see you through this difficult time in your life and to carry on his heritage of being a godly man. I know that you will. Please remember that you are not alone. You have a family in Christ. All of us at Second Calvary Baptist Church are here to share the journey with you and are praying for you and your family during this time. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the comfort of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Yours in Christ, Dr. Ralph McCormick, Pastor. Daddy, Mom, Yvonne, Kim, Rob, Tracy, and I will always love you. We will 
cherish your memories. And until we meet again, we love you, Daddy. We love you. Erica, we do thank you for all of the kind words on today. Um, I want to start off by saying that I didn't know if I would be able to even speak today. Those who know me, I'm, I'm a bag of water. I'm a crybaby. I don't mind telling you that. I, 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 I'm a crybaby. I'm the biggest crybaby there is. But the strength that is in me today is not of my own. I asked God, I said, God, I need you to do two things for me tomorrow. I said, make it where it's not so hot and give me strength to just speak for a short portion of time. On the day I want to just, not going to preach, going to take about five minutes of your time. And within the first minute, I want to express what I think my father would want me to express to you on today. And that is that he made this job real easy for me today by the life that he lived. And those of you who are not saved, I do encourage you to have a talk with Jesus. Get your life right. Get your life in order. My father had all his paperwork, everything in order, everything. Now, he wasn't a rich man, but he wasn't a poor man. But although he had enough money to do a whole lot of things, he chose to live a humble life. Now, one of the things that he taught me in his death, because I was sitting out in the driveway today, and I got a car that I haven't even driven yet sitting in the driveway. And my daddy taught me that, hey, son, you better drive that car because you don't know. And see, the thing about it is, and I'll tell you all this, don't take life too serious. And the reason why I say don't take it too serious because you will never get out alive. My father, to put it in two words, he was a fixer and a grower. That, that summons him. He would fix TVs. And sometimes, now, it wasn't his idea to take me to go fix TV, but my mama idea. And it took me until I was grown. I didn't know I was a double agent back then. <laughs> and when we come back, Mama fixed me some ice cream and said, Hey, son, how did everything go? And, and, and just talk. So I, I, I know what she was doing as a grown man, but I didn't know it then. But my dad would have this little orange-looking case and a little green-looking case. And one of it was a tube tester. And the other one was tubes. And he would open up the back of that TV and he would go in there and he would make sure when he left, the people were smiling because he had repaired the TV. He could fix anything around the house, whether it was plumbing, electricity. Matter of fact, that house y'all see on 601, we built that house. I remember my dad, my mama says, don't work them so hard, Glenn, it's one in the morning, let them go to bed. We got to finish this. <laughs> now, if you want to get a hammer and help, you can help, but we're going to finish this job. So dad, dad, he was a no-nonsense kind of fella, but see, what I want y'all to realize, it was... Glenn Robinson, and then there was June. I loved Glenn Robinson, and I hated June. Because June would cut my butt like there was no tomorrow, but Glenn would hold me on his shoulders and hug me. But now one thing I must say about my dad, he would always give you a fair trial. But now... 
in the fair trial, it always end the same way. But he would, t he, it would go like this. He would say, Kim, didn't your mama tell you to wash the dishes? Yes, sir. Did you wash them? No, sir. Why didn't you wash them? I don't know. Go get my belt. <laughs> if you had something that you needed to say, he gave you the opportunity. But if you couldn't prove your case, go get my belt. And he sat down on the bed with me one day and he told me this. He said, son, don't aggravate your mama. Because when you aggravate your mama, she aggravate me. And when she aggravate me, I got to do something about it. Go get my belt. <laughs> then there was the grower side. My daddy believed in planting it, watering and feeding it, and letting it grow. He did that with his brothers, his brother, my uncle, Uncle Sugar Boy. Didn't try to control to me, allowing to grow. Janella stood by my mother and father all the days of their life. And I thank you because at one point I was the only one here and Janella was the help that kept me from running the road so heavy. So I thank you, Janella. Yvonne has watched my daddy and helped him through thick and thin. Yvonne, thank you for standing and being there with dad. His godchildren, they did not fail to include him in all of their things that they did. They made him feel special. And I thank both of you for the job that you've done. My in-laws, Sarah and Thomas, we would always go out to dinner. And see, y'all might not know this, but Thomas is a big baller. He, he liked to pick up the check. See, I act like I want to pick up the check, but he actually picks the check up. I thank you for that. Tracy. We call Tracy the bouncer. Anything need enforcing, the enforcer will take care of it. My brother Glenn, he's always been right there. Matter of fact, he helped me out tremendously because it would have been a lot of stuff I had to do. And he didn't find it robbery to leave his high house in North Carolina and come back to South Carolina because his heart desired to be there for his mother and his father. And then the baby girl of the family. Now, Erica, Erica would say things to my daddy and I would take four steps back. Because I'm looking for June Robinson to just knock her out of her shoes. But I guess it was because she was the baby, she was able to get rid, uh, away with things that I could never get away with. But to his dying day, because my father, a lot of y'all probably didn't even know that he had any illness or anything, but he struggled for the last year. He really did. Just being able to walk and do a whole lot of normal things. He struggled. But you would never know it. But the Saturday before he passed away, he had a gigantic smile on his face. He enjoyed his family like a man who knew. I didn't know, but he knew. He knew. And he enjoyed his family thoroughly. 
He talked about all his nephew, all his nieces and nephews and grandchildren and granddaughter and even my son Justin, who's in Korea right now, serving time in the military. He wanted to come and he grabbed all the money that he had and he said, Daddy, I'm coming. I said, son, don't come. I said, this coronavirus particular situation, don't do it. Just stay and you will be able to watch vicariously. So that's what he's doing today. And the last thing I want to say before I sit down and allow y'all to go your own way. Dad was a big Dallas fan. <laughs> he loved the Cowboys to the end of time. He loved them when they was winning. He loved them when they wasn't winning. He loved them no matter what. But the same love that he displayed for his favorite team, he had another team that he even supported more and that was team robinson he supported team robinson with all that he had he was my first baseball coach my first basketball coach and football coach. <laughs> and one day he went out and he bought a pool table and he brought it home. And he didn't beat me in basketball, football, or baseball. But I was a pool shark. So I said, I got him now. Do y'all know my daddy was a bigger pool shark than me? So I had to get him on something. So I went and got a wall piece of plywood and put it over the pool table and made a ping pong table. And I said, I got him now. Because I would go up on South Carolina State College and I would beat everybody on South Carolina State College. So daddy grabbed the ping pong paddle. And I said, uh, I just played and let him win the first serve. So he said, you ready? I said, yeah. He throw the ball up and backhand it, and I didn't even see it. He said, that's one nothing. In other words, I wasn't able to beat him in anything. And uh, I do want to share this with you, and then I'm going to sit down. In my father's older age, he sat down with me, and he told me, some of his flaws. And I'm telling you this because I don't want you to think that he was a perfect man. But he was perfect for his family. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. As much as it please Almighty God and His wise providence to take out this world's soul out of deceased brother, Mr. Glenn Robinson, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Let's all join in as we recite the Our Father prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, receive the men of the Holy Spirit. May the rest from abide henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
Mr. Glenn Robinson, Jr. A light to shine so bright in your lives has gone out. Just remember, God only takes the best for himself. My prayer for you is that God will grant you the serenity to accept the things you cannot change, the curse to change the things that you can, the wisdom to know the difference is our prayer for you. This plaque has been given in his memory on behalf of me and my staff. The Bible tells the story of the great was baptized by John the Baptist. The Spirit of God ascended from heaven in the form of a dove. It is for that reason that we hold this beautiful white dove before you, symbolic of the flight that we must take to be at rest. It is the songwriter who wrote, Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. It is in the 55th Psalms of David that states for us, I had wings of a dove, but then would I fly away and be at rest. Fly on, Brother Robson, take your rest. This concludes our services.